Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. Off we go. So you work out what it was. What was it? It's Mr. Raider. Is it? Yes. I think it's calling Mr. Right, calling Mr. Wrong. Calling Mr. Red, calling no, Mr. No, but you're wrong. just singing. You're singing over the top of it. Oh, my lyrics are better. I know what I want and I want it now. These were really, <laughs> like, these were considered really fucking cheesy, bad rave songs actually in the, um, actually in the uh, 90s. If you listen to this stuff, you weren't a proper raver. <laughs> you weren't a proper raver. Yeah, I yeah. can understand You weren't that. a proper raver. You were a cheese that. ball. You were a cheese raver. <laughs> You were a bit of a cheese ball, right? No. I'm but pro- the words are calling Mr. Raider. Raider. Yeah. It's Call kind of him Mr. Raider. Call him Mr. Wrong. Call him Mr. Raider. Call him. Is that it? It doesn't sound right, does it? She yeah. did it better. Anyway, I'm just glad there's a video to take me back there. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 oh, do, do, you and your songs every single time. Mm. To, Kirby's trying Call to get you to come Mr. into Ray. the Call to the current Mr. age Ray. and you just want to yeah, but swing just, us back to the 70s and I, 80s all the time. That was 1992. Well, well it's not the it's 80s. It's close. It's not the End 90s. of the 80s. Not like the 70s, not the 80s, I mean. Surprise you're not in the 60s. We need to do something from – we need to do an Elvis song. We need to do an Elvis song. We'll do an Elvis song next time. Yeah. yeah. Only fools rush <laughs> I'm scared to sing because after your conversation with me head, about yeah. getting annoyed about me singing. And I just no, think – No, it just brings up some childhood trauma for me. <laughs> Good segue. Good, good segue. That was a good segue. Good segue. Just quick hey. funny side story. Hey. Anne didn't even understand. She thought we were taking the piss when we were telling her that there was a word called segue and it meant yeah. two things. Yeah. She thought we were absolutely she was a yeah. bit she was a bit drunk. Yeah. This is back in the days that she was drinking. Yeah. She was a bit drunk that night, but she was like, There's no fucking way that that's a word and that it means yeah. two things. Yeah, it <laughs> is a word actually. and it does mean two things. <laughs> Give me another word that means two things. Um lots of words. Go. I can't think of one. Aren't right you, now, weren't you a school teacher? I was, but like, don't, a don't very put me bad on, one. Don't put me on the spot like that. Okay, okay. Sorry. so we are talking about what did you say that a triggers very, childhood trauma? Yeah, yeah. So we are talking a little bit about that. Yeah, um, Does because that song triggered childhood trauma. That song doesn't. Yeah. You're saying my singing does, does. but yeah. you don't, that's not true. You don't even know what that triggers. Yeah. You just know that you are triggered by it. Very. Anyway, so. Um, I, I, we've got so much to say about being triggered about something yeah. that we're not going to talk about on this podcast okay. because we've already talked about it. And right. um, it's very important that we don't see the word triggering the way that everyone else sees the word triggering. So just being mindful of that, yeah. like bearing that in mind, go listening. Like, yeah. you know, other go listen to the other one. Everyone can listen to the other one if they yeah. want to listen That's to about that. Podcast so, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Anyway, but we're talking about trauma. And even trauma, we don't think about the way other people think about trauma. Yeah. So I think before we talk about, like, what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about warning signs that you have been, that your trauma or the, these things that have happened to you in the past have, have you know, triggered you in some way in the present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but can you just describe what you mean by trauma so that everyone can understand our perspective of okay. trauma? So trauma is... The psyche's inability to piece together the parts of the puzzle based on the event and where you are now in your life. So if you have an event that has occurred that you are not able to logically understand and once the logic understands it, the heart opens. Once the heart opens, the logic then and the heart are in congruency. So we call it trauma when we haven't made sense of it. Yeah, we somewhere. can't piece the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. How was that back there occurring in my life of service to me now? Right. So what happens is then you will you will continue to attract parts, pieces in your life and things in your, events in your life that will press play on that Buttons, part of the yeah. psyche of what happened to try to get you to work it out. And then people think, oh my God, I'm traumatized or I'm having something happen to me and this is a bad thing. Um, and it's uh, and all that's happening is is that the y- y- life and the universe is trying to get you to work out what occurred, mm. 
get you to a point of equanimity because you have an imbalanced perspective around what happened. And the more you keep pulling up the imbalanced perspective or the more you keep reliving the event, the more you keep altering it and changing it every time mm. you pull it out and put it out, pull it out and put it back and pull it out and put it back. In terms of your memory. Yeah, until it, yes, until it just, be, the memory becomes a distortion. The emotion becomes what you perceive to be real for you. Mm-hmm. And then events keep occurring to bring up the emotion and now um, the emotion now is in control of you because you're addicted to that emotion. You keep projecting that into the world, creating more experiences to make you feel the emotion. So now your emotions are controlling your life. So that's just – that's confusing. So be simplified. Like what I'm saying is if, somebody, if somebody's here and they – are listening and they have had an experience in their life in a, the most simple way what you're saying is the incident is the incident but then how we perceive the incident that has happened mm-hmm. right brings up all the emotions and the more we feel the emotions the more we bring those emotions out to the world and therefore the more they come back to us is yeah, that it's the essence of what we're you're broadcasting saying broadcasting it we're attracting back in humans are information gatherers and problem solvers. So therefore, that means that once you once you've had that experience and you haven't pieced it together, yeah, you're still experiencing those emotions, and therefore, it's almost like you continue to experience it. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. that's why and you get trapped in cycles. And, stuff like that. Yeah. and I fucking hate the word. No, trigger. so do I. But that's why you 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 continue to get caught in the cycles over and over and over again, yeah. and it doesn't go away. And it's not the the key thing that I I I, I love people that understand and I watch when they get it. So they do like relationships in your they do flip the script and they get it. And in that moment they realize, wow, life wasn't actually giving me a hard time. Yeah. What it was doing was it was trying to get me to work out something that I perceived I was emotionally caught up in. Mm. Ultimately to give me a greater experience moving forward of life. So um that's um when we talk about that, so before we go into some signs that some of that might be happening for you, is when when we talk about that, um, I think sometimes trauma seems like a bad, a big word, right? And I think that sometimes it is. It's a big experience that people have experienced. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it doesn't have to be as big as what you perceive others experience mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. The the bigness is from your perspective, is mm-hmm. your perception of it, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if we look at facts and figures, facts and figures are this thing happened. Yeah. The, the the response is about how much emotion we put into what that was. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. And that doesn't mean that what's happened is right or wrong, good or bad, pleasure, pain. It can be all of those things. That's right. But it's more about how we – the value we give on that and us tr- not being able to piece together – you know, and we and the reason that we say that is because we've worked with people who have had been able to piece together yeah. what's happened to yep. them, right? So, it, and understand it, it's important for people to understand when you're getting a person to properly piece something together, your ultimate destiny with them is to get to a point where you say to them, "Okay, if I could take it away from your life and it, make it not have ever happened, would you?" Uh, they have to, you have to get them to a point where they go, "No." Yeah. Uh, because if you don't get them there, all you're doing is you're just witch hunting something that they perceive was yeah. traumatic, perceived was traumatic yeah. and has not been of service to them. Yeah. So uh, we know that life tells us that everything is of service to you. Yeah. So trauma is just an inability for the person to see how the event was of service to them. Mm-hmm. When they see how it's of service to them, they would never want to undo the event and they would never call it trauma. Mm-hmm. Therefore, trauma is just a sexy word or a, a word that is used to help a person... I. To help a person identify. identify why they're doing certain things or feeling certain stuff, but n- nothing that happens to us in life is designed to traumatize us. Mm. That's all based on how we choose to see it or not to see it. Mm. I, I'm going to say for people listening who've had big events happening in their li- happen in their lives, um, that's going to be a, a, a difficult thing to swallow to say that to say. I, I, I mean, I hundred percent. Like, you know, I 100% agree with you, but that might be a difficult thing to swallow, right? How would you... Well, well, what I would... St- I mean, it's a, I think it's important that it's not a thing to swallow because you can never swallow it. It's a, when, when you see it as trauma, it's always in your mouth. It's, uh, it's not something you swallow. Right. It's not something you can push down because you, you're, you're seeing it 
as it's always there. It never goes away because we meet them all the time. Yeah, no, no, it I just know. haunts and haunts and haunts them. And then what happens is they just become used to it. People are just uh, people are just they just become used to the injury. You know, and they adapt their lives around it and then they pick their partners and then they have their kids and then they pick their jobs and then they pick their career and they don't realize that the thing that's holding them back um, that they've become unconscious to in some cases, consciously unconscious, well, consciously unconscious to it, is actually the key to them changing their whole world and their whole reality. Do you know what I mean? So, th- so they never actually swallow it down, Will. So, uh, I don't think we've. What I mean is, what I a mean. A hard is thing for people to swallow. The fact that there is perfection in it. The yeah. fact that there is. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. somebody's never heard anything yeah. like that yeah. before, yeah. to hear that all this stuff that happened to me is perfect, yeah. Yeah. it it can be quite confronting for people mm. to see mm. that. But I think that. Um, ultimately, that's a lot because they we're well, conditioned okay, but, but to see that that. That it has to be a certain way. We have to react a certain way to that. Yeah, but but it's society says that a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, not people. You know, people are very outwardly influenced, so they want to adapt to what society says rather than being inwardly clear or fluent and changing the world based on what happened to mm. them. And so, people, I, I I think that people lose their mind. This is a crazy thing. Okay, P- people lose their mind. By around at around about seven, eight, nine years old, by the time they've got to that point, they're just in a habitual cycle and mm. they have no sense of their own mind. So the things that uh, what dealing with it does is, and looking at it, and getting yourself to a point where it, uh, trauma is living the rest of your fucking life with it haunting you. Mm. That's traumatic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's that's like. That's why, you know, uh, I have no problem saying this stuff because, you know, we help people out the other side of that all the time. Yeah. And we don't just kind of help them, sort of help them. We yeah, completely tur- completely turn their lives mm-hmm. around. Well, show them how to turn their lives around. Yeah. And and but the thing about it is is that then they realize, holy fuck, if I if I hadn't have done this or I hadn't have seen this or I hadn't have got this, I would have spent the rest of my life feeling this way, thinking this way. I would have it would have affected my relationship with my children, with my partner, with my career. And now I realize, holy fuck, it, it, mm. it, uh, thank God I, I stopped and I looked, mm. you know, because trauma at that point, you go, okay, so what is trauma? Well, trauma is living the rest of my bleeding life thinking that this is, you know, I have to spend the rest of my life trying to fit in. Yeah, 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 get it. So in terms of signs that we've got that stuff going on mm-hmm. and that we're being triggered, obviously, that mm-hmm. word, yep. um, let's talk about them because there's a few – clear ones the first one is being overly emotional Mm -hmm. or being overly shut down both of them are just as emotional Mm -hmm. some people will be overly um teary Mm -hmm. or they'll be overly like shut down as Mm -hmm. a result of that because Mm -hmm. they just um they're trying to cope so they either use their emotions to cope or shut down their emotions to cope, mm. and that is emotional, and that's emotional. So, of the, so the, the, you know, the, the you know, shutting yourself down is high end emotion. Of course, over teary is high end emotion. emotion, and just not being able to comprehend why am I so you know why am I so teary? Why am I just yeah. you know? Now it's important for us to state there that like I'm quite an emotional person. You know, I get emotional with stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I can be listening to a song, I can get emotional. I can be thanking someone, and I just get mm-hmm. emotional. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about spirits of emotion where, you know, you're waking up in the middle of the night crying and you don't know what the fuck you're doing yet. Yeah, there's t- like there's there, with everything that we say, it mm. doesn't mean that you that every moment of this, but if you're noticing patterns of this, yeah. that's when you know that there's you're Well, I'll give an example with Ange. When Ange worked out what had happened to her, when yeah. she when she she said to me one day, I said, So how did you know? And she said, Well, we just thought it was a natural part. We just thought it was what happened. You know, we thought it happened in every family. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And what happened that that changed? And she said, my sister had gone and become a counselor, and she came home one day and said to us, "Hey, do you remember when we were little kids and this used to happen?" And she went, "Yeah." She said, "Did you know that that's this?" Yeah. And from that point, that was when Ange was like, suddenly, I just started to feel like, whoa, I was angry and mad, and like this little girl had. I'd ignored her and had got hurt and mm. I'd never done anything about it and I never, you know, nobody picked up on it. Fucking mm. my mother didn't pick up on it and my father didn't pick up on it. And then she said she was in the kitchen one day and she said she dropped, she opened the bag of rice 
And she dropped about three grains of rice on the ground. And she said she just exploded and just ended up in a fetal position on the ground, mm. inconsolable, kicking and screaming and didn't know why the fuck it was happening. Mm. And then came out of it going, what the fuck just happened there? Mm. Didn't, and that's when she realized, hold on a minute, there's something, something else here. going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so another sign is um, constantly seeking comfort and reassurance. Mm. So um, comfort and reassurance can come in lots of ways. So it can come from another person. So you're mm-hmm. trying, you're needy with other people, mm-hmm. um, and it can come from addictions. So it can be comfort in the form of food, alcohol, sex, um, mm-hmm. drugs, um, yeah. uh, anything that sort of takes you away from um, being able, having to feel stuff yeah. and so when you're constantly seeking comfort and reassurance like that it's a sign that um something has been activated in you a button has been pressed and maybe you don't even know yeah. what button has been pressed yeah yeah so it's not about you know obviously everybody seeks comfort at different times it's about when this happens in such a way where you, it's like you don't mm. it's almost like it takes you takes over you you know it's like a mindless type of thing where you're looking for reassurance, you're looking for that affection, you're looking for that comfort, you know, in whatever way, shape or form you can find yeah, it, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, the next one is um, playing it safe. So, but on its opposite side, it can be really being reckless at the uh-huh. same time, right? So some people are just, you know, as soon as they see a risk, as soon as they see there's any potential danger, it's like step back. Do you know mm. what I mean? And um, and then on the other token, it can be just like, who gives a flying fuck and just yeah. go for it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nobody mm. cares. So um, both of those are responses to being, you know, having something happen to you and you don't know – when you don't know how to handle it, you'll mm. either play it safe or you'll just go nuts with the mm. whole thing, mm. you know. Um, in my family, we had um, – m- um, before I was born – um, my one of my grandmother's sisters passed away, but it had an impact on the whole family, and even to today, like I like I see how certain members of my family are affected by the potential of physical harm. It's like they're so like. How did she like, pass? A uh, gas explosion. Really? Yeah, like Fuck. an explosion of like a, this. Even for me, I hate it when people go into. Oh, I've, I just, I've been around the gas bottles, but you, yeah. you've gone like, I'm oh, not oh, fucking oh, do that. Fuck? It's just this. This I don't know why. It's just this thing that I. I, I, I don't want people to think like we hang around gas bottles. Like, no, you know what I mean. But you know those gas heaters. That yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just have this thing about doing that. You know, I don't. I wouldn't want to. Click, even click, clicking click, it. Click, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, I wasn't even there, you know, when this happened. But so I where, have, where was she? Like she was at home, and, and, the, bl- and the, it blew at the farm. Up. Yeah, fuck that. That should have been blown to smithereens. Mm. So my, a lot of people in my family are very, very mindful of physical safety, and so they're very like they play it so so safe. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like nothing. Like they're just freaked out about wow. anything that potentially could cause any physical harm. Wow. So. Um, yeah, and I think that's partly to do with that because uh, one particular person I'm thinking of was young when that happened. Right. And sh- that would have had an imprint on her mm. because she knew her very well, you know. So I think that that's, yeah, anyway. Jesus. Um, so playing it safe um, or being reckless. The next one is struggling to maintain boundaries. Can I just go back to reckless for a second? Yeah. Now, reckless in terms of, uh, w- I used to see it in my 20s because I was a drug taking lunatic but reckless sexually as well. Mm-hmm. You know, not caring, not having any boundaries, not having any line in the sand, you know, and just being like, just not caring about yeah. themselves. Not caring about themselves, Put yeah. them, Putting themselves in dangerous situations, yeah. you know, being super over promiscuous. Yeah. That's... That's a part of it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. Go on. Well, then that also leads into not being able to set boundaries and yeah. not being able to maintain them. Like, yeah. I, you know, I say maintain, but the truth about it is is that I think people don't even know how to set them. Yeah. They don't know where where they finish and something else begins. It's like they don't have an understanding yeah. of. No. Uh, no. Yeah. 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 Because, um, you know, yeah, I, I think. L- I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and like it's, it. like, it's like, uh, for me, personally, that took a long time. It's like I have this such – because I I grew up in a space where I felt like I was missing out on everything that was happening out right. there. So for me, whenever – when I got old enough that I could take those opportunities, I had this massive FOMO. I felt like I had to say yes to everything because I felt like I had 
I, I was making up for all this lost time right. instead of realising that actually there's certain things I don't want to do yeah. and it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, an, it's okay to set those boundaries and to set those standards for yourself. Yeah. And that like, that goes across to everything. That goes across, like you said, to your sexuality. That goes across in terms of finances. That goes across in terms of relationships, in terms of um, family, everything. Like when you're not able to set boundaries and then not able to maintain those boundaries, it's like you might have an idea of the boundary but then you're not able to maintain it because somebody just talks to you and you're convinced otherwise. Do you mm, know what I mean? Mm. So basically what happens is you keep encroaching on your own space mm. to please other people or to make to, – to, to keep the peace or whatever that is, you know. So I think boundaries and having a healthy understanding of boundaries is super important. Mm. And if, you, uh, if you're if you finding that that is being – encroached upon and you're allowing that that could be a sign that, that, that you know what and just been really good with that with the kids um and has really taught our girls and ollie uh, our little fella to n- say no so when you know no means no yeah so if like uh, what i used to find i'd be tickling them and you know chasing them and attacking them and they'd go no 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 and then i'd say mitch you have to stop when they say no you have to stop and mm-hmm. pull away. And then if they want to jump and attack you back, then you'll go back in. But yeah. when this no means no. So all of my girls was like yesterday, they were chasing each other. It's not very often you see the three of them messing in the house, but there was no other kids around. All their mates were off doing stuff. So they're in the house and they're chasing each other around the house. And I don't mind that. As long as they're not doing that fucking high-pitched screaming, oh my God, <laughs> it drives me bonkers. But other than that, they're running around and um, Lola will go. Lexi, um, I don't like it. I, no, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Once they say that, then it's they ha, they, yeah. they, it stops. It's all off. And teaching, um, teaching from a young age to kids that you know, because as fathers, you just you want to keep tickling them, you want to keep messing with them. You don't realize that it's too intense for them. Mm-hmm. You know, f- tickling is actually a form of fucking torture. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's actually it's too much for them. So you have to be able to when when I would do that with my with my girls, I taught them to understand so that when they get older, they got a boyfriend and he's trying to do something that they don't want to have happen. They know how to go. No, you know. Yeah. So my get, Lexi will go. No, 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 yeah. no, no. That's not okay. Well, I know? said to Lexi one time. I said, I said something about you know you got to be careful. Like something about being careful around such because no one's going to mess with me. <laughs> like like this yeah. whole attitude of like oh, I can stand up for myself type yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. which I love. I love yeah. the fact that she's just that certainty yeah. in herself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, and that, and that I think is what it is. It's like you. When when you've had those experiences, I think you second guess yourself and you mm. doubt yourself, and so you then compromise your boundaries as a result of that. So yeah. that's a, a sign. Um, the other one and the last one is pleasing others, and I think this is a. I don't think people realise how much pleasing others is a can be an issue and can yeah. be a sign of that, because it kind of leans into the boundaries thing as well. But it's really about not having the value on yourself and making other people's ideas, opinions. Um, outcomes whatever more important than your own yeah you know? well if you don't have an idea or an opinion you'll just scapegoat and lean into other people's ideas or opinions well well yes so as a as a response mm. to trauma right depending on what's happened to you you have oftentimes you feel like you have got to walk on eggshells. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to behave in a certain way yeah. because otherwise you might get hurt or you might get left behind. Yeah. Or you might get neglected or you might get abandoned or you yeah. might get whatever. Yeah. So that whole walking on eggshells is just like trying to find out where do I fit yeah. in this scenario? You know, where do, where, where do I fit in here? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So people pleasing is a sign. So any of those signs. So the, my, my feeling with all of that is with any of those signs, there's nothing wrong with any of them. It's about now instead of using them and getting annoyed at yourself yeah. by that you're doing that. I'd rather you use it as a tool of inquiry, asking yourself why, where did that come from? Why did mm. I feel the need to mm. do that? Why did I why did I just drink that alcohol then instead of talk to that person? Why did I feel like I needed to um, you know, go along with this plan? Why did I give up my boundary there? Why was I emotional about that? Asking questions I think is the best thing. Mm. Like one of the things I talk about in my my personal coaching with my mindset club group is that is it's always like the way that you the way to 
continually learn about yourself is ask questions. Treat yourself like you would anyone else. Be inquisitive about why that is and let it lead to the next thing that you do so that you can learn about mm. yourself, that you can work because there's no point in understanding these signs unless you're going to do something about them, mm. right? So learn about them and then inquire after yourself and then be gentle with yourself yeah. as you're doing that and then start to start to understand maybe that you might be putting yourself in a situation or the environment might, might not be suitable to your growth and what you're, you're needing in order to, you know, move past certain things. So I think it's just about really asking yourself yeah. questions and, and checking in with yourself as a yeah, result. Yeah, 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 totally agree. Very cool. Do you want to know more about our transformational seminar, Relationships in You? This is our signature seminar event we've been running for over 20 years. Yes, for over 20 years now, we have helped tens of thousands of people hack their consciousness, reveal to them what it is that is actually holding them back. And then we've held their hands and kept them accountable to overcoming whatever these limitations were. We've shown them how to bridge the gap from where they are to where they want to be in a fun and informative game oriented experience that absolutely blows people's minds. So all you have to do to get that information is find us on socials. We're at MJB Seminars on Facebook and Instagram. Send us a message that says Bridge the Gap and we will send you a video that you can have a listen to and it will, you'll also get the availability to book in for a free coaching call.